Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we're doing another Citrix uh, video. I'm super excited about this one because I took some time and uh, I got my VM server uh, up and running. And uh, I, as you can see, I'm attached to my uh, VM server right now and I have a bunch of machines up and running with no problem. Super excited about this. And uh, I built my Citrix environment the way that I want it. I think on the last video, I showed you guys how to build a dirty lab. Uh, I built this Citrix environment with two virtual machines, an Active Directory, and a Citrix server that I installed everything inside of it, which is not best practice. And uh, today I'm going to show you guys what I did. So I have four machines. I have my Active Directory. This is my Active Directory. Uh, my 01 and my 02 are my Zenapp servers. And I have a client, which is my Windows 7 box. So I'm going to bring up the PDF. Now, I have three PDFs that I'm going to attach uh, to my site. You guys could just go to my website and just grab these files. But the, the first one is all about uh, the license server. So I install the license server with, within my active directory. Uh, you insert the ISO. You're basically going to click on start for the Zen apps because that's what we're doing. I actually picked the Citrix license uh, server part right here. And you're gonna once it clicks on that, it's gonna load up. You're gonna accept the license agreement. And next, this is what's gonna install automatically. I left the default as the C drive. You could change it up to you, but I left it as the default as the C drive, right? Click on next. These are gonna be all the TCP IP ports that you guys are going to uh, have. Make sure that these ports are enabled within your firewall, within your infrastructure. Uh, but you can set it manually if you want. I left it as the default as automatically. Uh, next thing, this nice little summary and install, and that's it. You're done. Complete it. <laughs> the license server is done. It's really simple. Again, I actually installed this license server within my Active Directory, which I'm going to show you guys. Don't worry about that. Now, the second thing that I did was within my Zenapp Server 01 server, I installed the direct uh, the delivery controller. Uh, again, insert the ISO. Uh, I picked the Zen app because that's what we're doing. Click on next. Uh, from here, I picked the delivery controller. Again, the delivery controller cannot be installed within Active Directory. I learned my lesson on the first video that I did with you guys with the Dirty Lab. Uh, so I clicked on that and uh, accept the license agreement. And then once you accept the license agreement, uh, from here, I only chose uh, delivery controller, the studio, and the director. Those are the only three things that are being installed with my Zenapp 01 server. Uh, I unchecked the license server because, again, we actually installed it within our Active Directory. And the storefront, I'm going to actually install that on my 02 Zenapp server. And then we're going to click on Next. So let's go to the next slide. So I don't have a Microsoft SQL database. So I'm going to allow Zenapp the installation to install uh, Server 2012 Service Pack 2 Express. And it's also going to install the remote uh, assistance within Windows. And we're going to click on Next. These are the ports that are going to be enabled or you need enabled within your firewall infrastructure. So make sure that that stuff is open. Uh, you could actually set it up manually, but it's really up to you. I left it as automatically. Make life easy for me. Uh, next slide. A nice little summary of everything that's going to be installed. Click Next. It's going to start extracting all the files. I installed Storefront. So a storefront, I actually installed it within uh, my 02 machine, as you guys can see, 02. Uh, again, insert the ISO. Once the ISO is inserted, make sure you click on Start on Zenapp because that's what we're doing for this series. And uh, you're going to select Citrix Storefront. And it's going to load up. Accept the license agreement. Click on Next. It's going to install uh, Storefront. I, le I left the default as the C drive. But if you guys have a partition, go for it. Drop it in there. Click on next. These are the ports that are going to be enabled or you need to enable uh, within your firewall to make sure everything is talking to each other. Again, I left it as automatically, but you guys could change it manually. Uh, next slide. Nice little summary of everything that's going to be installed. And it's going to extract the files and it's going to finish and you're done. Awesome. So let's get inside our server and let's go inside my Active Directory. Now, within my Active Directory, like I told you guys, I installed the Citrix uh, license server. So let's go to Start. Let's go to All Programs, Citrix, and we're going to the Citrix License Administration Console. Let's close that. Ask me later. Don't worry. Uh, continue to the website. And there you go. Now, we need to get into the administrative uh, portion of this. Now, your username and password is your Active Directory account that you use to install this stuff. Now, for me, it would be BTNHD. That's my domain. 
And I did everything as an administrator and make sure you put the password. It might be different for you guys. And I'm going to log in. Now, for me, I have the trial base license and uh, I'm just going to use that for now. I have 90 days, 99 users, and I could just play around with that. But the way that you get the license, if you have the trial base, you just import it here and just locate the LIC file. Uh, I haven't actually got the LIC file, so I'm probably going to use the built-in license that they uh, they give you within the Citrix thing, which I'm going to actually show you guys. So uh, once your license stuff is done within your your environment, the next thing that you need to do is get into your get into your delivery controller. So within my delivery controller, we're going to go to Start, and we're going to go into All Programs. Citrix and Citrix Studio. Okay, so once your delivery controller is up and running or your Citrix Studio is up and running, uh, I haven't created anything yet. So nothing is really populated right here on the side, right? So what we're going to do is click on delivery applications and desktop to users, new site setup. It's going to launch the site setup. So let's give the site a new name. Make sure you do a fully configured production ready site, which is recommended for new users. I'm a new user, so that's why we're doing that. And I'm going to do it. Uh, site name is BTN HD. And we're going to click on next. The database is locally. Uh, and this is all the databases that are going to be created. We've got three databases. And this is the location, which is local host. And we're going to click on next. Now the license server. Again, guys, uh, you can actually use uh, the local host or you can use the 30-day. I'm actually going to use my BJ. Let's see if uh, what happens to BJ-AD. Uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, BTNHD EDU. See if I'm able to connect. So uh, the certificate is not trusted. Do not connect me. Uh, connect me. I do. This is my infrastructure. So you can actually view the certificate. Um, you can actually install the certificate on the fly. So I'm going to install it on the fly right now. Finish it. Install it on the server. Import. OK. So I do want to get connected. So hit confirm. Connected to a trusted server. Awesome. This is awesome. And we're going to click on next. Because I'm going to, again, I'm going to do the 30 day trial. But if we actually went inside Active Directory and imported our license, this 30 day trial won't even appear. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to click on next on that. Now, from here, our connection type, I'm going to say uh, no machine manage for now. Uh, select the connection type. If the machine management is not used, for example, when using physical hardware, select no machine. I'm going to do a no machine management for now. Uh, but you have a bunch of options. You have uh, Zen servers. You have uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager. You have vSphere. Oh, man, this is awesome. I can't wait when I start getting into this stuff with you guys. But for now, I'm going to do no machine management, and we're going to click on next. Uh, I'm not doing any at V, sad face, I know. I am going to be doing it on future videos, so we're going to click on next for that. Uh, no for now, and nice little brief summary of everything that's going to be happening, and we're going to click on finish. All right, so it looks like our site setup is completed. Awesome, beautiful. Uh, what you actually could do if you want to do like the proactive approach, you can, actually, you can actually test your site configuration, but I'm not going to do that now because it takes a little longer. And uh, the next thing that I did was configure the storefront. So let's get inside our Zenapp 02 machine. Let's get in here and let's go to start. And within start, all programs, Citrix, and Citrix Storefront because I haven't created it yet. Okay, so once our Citrix Storefront console is up and running, I'm going to double click on this to open it up. Uh, I don't have a storefront, so we need to create one together. So let's uh, click on create a new deployment and the base URL. So confirm that the base URL for the service host of this deployment for multiple server deployment specifies the local balance URL for the new server group. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is. It gave me a nice little warning. What's this warning? The Citric receiver requires HTTPS uh, connection by default. Users must configure Citrix receiver to use HTTP. Ooh, so let's change that to an S. Awesome. And we're going to click on next. So the base URL is configured. So the next step is giving the store a name. So I'm actually going to give it uh, BJ Tech News HD. And we're going to click on next. And what's our delivery controller? So we're going to click on add and give the controller name. It's up to you. So I'm actually going to do this. Let's do this because this makes sense to me. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that is because that's the actual name of my controller. This is my controller right here, right? And uh, yep, the type, 
depends on what kind of environment you're doing. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be doing the latest and greatest, which is in app seven point five or later, uh, and that's at our new server. And from here, you can't do IP address. For some reason, you can't do IP address. So you got to make sure you have a fully qualified domain name. And it's going to be uh, bj-axas-01.btnhdu. Hopefully, it goes well. Press OK. Awesome. Uh, yep, 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 yep. You're going to press OK. And we're going to click on Next. Uh, I'm not going to do any remote access for now, but this is pretty cool because you could do uh, no VPN tunneling or full VPN tunneling. I'm not going to do that for now, probably later on in the future videos. And we are going to click on create. Okay, so our storefront installation is completed. I'm always happy when I get these little warnings right here. It says created it successfully. That's awesome. Uh, so this is our site right here. So let's click on it. Uh, and it should take us to our new website which is our storefront. Awesome. And uh, let's close this. Oh, actually, I should have added it, right? Uh, I should have added it. So let's, uh, let me do something real quick. Uh, get out of here. Get out of here. Let me close this up real quick. Let's close that up. Let's go inside my server manager. I hate that dialog box. So I'm going to inside my server manager and I'm going to go to the node and we are going inside configure IE and let's turn it off for me. Let's turn it off for the user again. This is a testing environment, right? And let's close that up and let's click on that link again. See what happens. Uh, I probably, oh, so that's, uh, I think it's because of the HTTPS. Ah, so it is the HTTPS. Uh, it's not configured as of yet. I have to configure the HTTPS for it to be read, which is okay. I don't have the Citrix receiver, which is okay. I don't have the Citrix receiver installed inside this machine, but it's okay. No worries. So we're going to close this up, but it looks like it's working and we're going to click on finish. I should have created the storefront without the HTTP because now I have to configure it more. I have to get more involved into the web services and configure it to be read to the security portal. Oh, that sucks, but it's okay. Uh, so our storefront is up and running and uh, super excited. I'm super excited. Are you guys super excited? Yes. So the next thing that I did was I went inside my Windows box and I needed to install a VDA, which is the virtual delivery agent. Uh, I think I have uh, the ISO mounted. I don't have the ISO mounted. So let's right click on my server, go to settings, go here, let's browse and let's mount this uh, Zenap ISO. Is it going to get connected? Wait a minute. Let's see. Let's do that again. It's not connected. There you go. Now it's connected. Let's go to computer. Awesome. It's there. So we're going to run it. And from here, we're, we're still doing Zenap. So we're going to click on next. I mean, start. From here, we're going to do a virtual delivery agent. That's what we want. Virtual delivery agent. Configuration, I'm going to do a create a master image. So we're going to click on next. Uh, no, I'm not going to install a standard VDA, which is for the VDA HDX 3D Pro. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to leave it as the default. Uh, Citrix receiver should be installed, so we're going to click on next. I'm going to do it manually. So our manually would be our name. Let's go one dot btnhdedu. We're going to test our connection. Awesome. We're going to add it. We're going to go to next. This is everything that's going to be installed by default. Just leave it. Click on next. Uh, these are all, This is going to be all the firewall settings. Uh, you could change it manually, but I'm going to leave the default as automatically. Click on next. A nice little summary of what's going to be installed, and we're going to click install. So our VDA is completed. Our virtual delivery agent within our Windows 7 environment, awesome, is completed. It wants me to uh, click on finish so I can restart the machine. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And uh, a couple of things that I need to do off bat, I need to fix that SSL problem within my 02 machine. And the reason why that's happening is because I don't have a certificate. It says it right here, no certificate associated with the storefront server. So I'm probably going to go inside my IIS and create a um, self-signed certificate uh, for my environment to work properly. 
and uh, this is awesome. I'm super excited. Or I could basically just create another storefront just using HTTP. But I want to do everything secure, so why not do it best practice, right? Securely. I'm super excited. I have my Citrix Zenapp 7.5 uh, infrastructure, my environment set up, my test lab, good to go. I think on the next video, we're going to get into... Uh, deploying some applications, getting that stuff up and running. I'm super, super excited about this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will be posting the links at the bottom at the video, at the description part, so you guys can grab those PDFs that I show you at the beginning of the video, uh, as well as I'm going to break down everything of what I've set up, like my, what my AD has, what my uh, my Zenap 01, my Zenap 02, my Windows 7 machine. I'm going to break all that stuff down for you guys at my website so you guys should start uh, hopefully mimicking or start building your lab as well so we could follow along together uh if you have any comments or concerns again leave it at the bottom don't forget about hitting that like button and i catch you guys on the next one peace out